All right, good evening and welcome. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Bangor City Council. Today is Monday, November 13th, 2023. As always, we begin each meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I would like to ask our newest counselors, Councillor Fish and Councillor Dean, if they will lead us in the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Thank you. This is the portion of the meeting reserved for public comment. If there's any member of the public wishing to speak about any item that is not on the agenda, please approach the podium, state your name and address, and share your comment. Each person will have three minutes to speak, and any inappropriate or offensive comments may be removed. Those on Zoom can indicate they wish to speak using the hand raise function. All right, we'll start with Doug. Good evening. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Uh, thanks for the time and uh, congratulations to the new uh, councillors and to you, Kara, for being the new chair. My name is Doug Dunbar. I actually live just over the line into Herman at 2284 Union Street. I live in Herman rather than Bangor because I've been taking care of elderly parents out here in Herman uh, for a number of years. I'm here now just with my dad and he and I are fortunate to have a warm, comfortable home. It is small and simple, uh, but it is home. Uh, unfortunately, as you know, hundreds of people in the greater Bangor area don't have that luxury. They don't have a home tonight. Uh, many are couch surfing or in an encampment or by themselves in the woods or wherever. Uh, and uh, fortunately, I know you all are committed to addressing homelessness. It's a crisis. Um, I, for the new counselors, I helped to facilitate a collaboration of about 30 agencies and organizations called Penobscot County Cares. We started two years ago to help raise greater awareness about the crisis of housing and homelessness, but also related issues of substance use disorder and overdose deaths and a rise in mental illness. And uh, so you'll be hearing from Penobscot County Cares from time to time. I wanna just leave you with one number. Well, a couple of numbers. One is 80, eight zero. Uh, the superintendent of Bangor schools indicated to me last spring that at least 80 children in the Bangor school system are unhoused. And with a spike in evictions this year in Bangor and uh, throughout the region, that number, you know, likely is probably closer to 100 children in Bangor alone that are unhoused. That doesn't include their siblings who are too young to be in school. It doesn't include their siblings who are too old to be out of school. It doesn't include their parents or other family members. There are hundreds of people without housing. The good news is there are solutions. The problem is for the past couple of years, the council I'm afraid has sort of been paralyzed, unable to move in new directions or try new things. Uh, but there are solutions, you'll be hearing about them. Uh, and I hope that increasingly we can work together. Lastly, I would just say the sweep of an encampment that happened uh, a couple of weeks ago is considered a worst practice. There are best practices, there are worst practices. And the Maine State Council on Homelessness and the United States Interagency Council on Homelessness, the federal government's response to homelessness, agree that sweeps are harmful. They're traumatizing and harmful. So you'll be hearing about best practices, worst practices, and uh, solutions that, that could be implemented. There are ways to move forward. We just need to move. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doug. Is there anyone else who would wish to speak? Seeing no one else, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Minutes of Bangor City Council regular meeting of October 23rd, 2023. 
Business and Economic Development Committee meeting of November 6, 2023, and Finance Committee meeting of November 6, 2023. 24-002 order, appointing nominee to Finn Joshua Hunt, Bangor Mall Management Commission. 24-003 order, acknowledging receipt of the official results and the declaration results of the November 7, 2023 referendum election and municipal election. 24-004 order, authorizing the city manager to execute a collective bargaining agreement between the city of Bangor and the amalgamated Transit Union A2U Local 714, representing transit drivers at the community connector. I would move approval of the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Is there any questions or comments? Seeing no doubt, the consent agenda will have passage. Referrals to committee and first reading. 24-005 ordinance amending chapter 165 land development code district map to rezone property located at 424 State Street from Urban Residence on District UR31. Government and Institutional Service District, GNISD, first reading and referral to planning board meeting on November 21st, 2023. 24-006 ordinance amending chapter 165 land development code district map to rezone property located at 586 Main Street from Urban Service District, USD, to Waterfront Development District, WDD. First reading and referral to planning board meeting on November 21st, 2023. Move these items be referred. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Questions or comments? These items should be referred. Unfinished business. 23-329 resolve authorizing the city manager to accept and appropriate $526,876 in grant funding for the main center for disease control to support public health infrastructure, California. Thank you, Madam Clerk. This resolve will authorize the city manager to accept and appropriate $526,876 from the main CDC to the public health infrastructure grant. Bangor Public Health and Community Service Services held this grant with the main CDC that ended September 30th this year. The funds appropriated under this contract will, will allow for the continuation of that work from October 1st of this year through September 30th of 2027. These funds will be used to increase the capacity of Bangor Public Health and Community Services to expand, train, and sustain responsible, ready public health workforce. And will also support Bangor Public Health and Community Services efforts towards becoming nationally accredited by the Public Health Accreditation Board. These items have been reviewed and recommended for approval by the, at the Government Ops uh, Committee meeting on September 16th of this year. Uh, Madam Chair, I will make a motion. Thank you. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Questions or comments? Seeing no doubt, this item has passage. 23-330 resolved authorizing the city manager to accept and appropriate $5,968,828 in funding from the main department of health and human services for the women, infants, and children program. Council House. Thank you, Madam Clerk. This resolve will accept and appropriate a total of $5,968,828 in grant funds for the women, infants, and children or WIC program for a coverage period of October 1, 2023 through September 30, 2025. Public Health and Community Services WIC Nutrition Program currently services a monthly average of 2,600 participants and has been operating the program since 1974. The proposed agreement provides $5,842,275 for WIC services 81,065 for breastfeeding peer counseling services and 45,488 for farmers market nutrition program services. This item was reviewed and recommended for approval at the government operations committee meeting on October 16, 2023. I would move passage of resolve 23-330. 
Second. Thank you. We have a motion. We have a second. <clears throat> Sir, questions or discussion on this item? Seeing none, item 23-330 has passage. New business. Public hearing, application for special amusement license renewal of the North Scott Theater Company. Doing business at the North Scott Theater Company, 131 Main Street, Council of Thank you, Madam Clerk. I would move to open the public hearing for the application for special amusement license renewal of Penobscot Theater Company. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Public hearing is open. Seeing no one approach, I would move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Public hearing is closed. I would move passage of the application for special amusement license renewal of Penobscot Theater Company doing business as Penobscot Theater Company, 131 Main Street. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion or comments, questions on this item? Seeing none, the application will have passage. That brings us to the end of tonight's agenda. Do we have any comments from our staff? Final comments from the counselors? Councilor Fish? No, thank you for um, your welcome tonight and uh, look forward to working with us. Thank you. Councilor Haas? Um, no special comments. Good night. Councilor Yakabaga. Yeah, I want to congratulate uh, Councillor Fish and Councillor Dean and returning Councillor Leonard on um, joining us uh, for this uh, new season. Uh, excited to be working along everyone. Uh, we have a lot to achieve. It's work in progress. It never ends. <laughs> but I'm excited and congratulations to our chair, <laughs> Councillor Peltier. So we're excited to, to start this new year and looking forward to working with everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Councillor Trumbull. Yeah, thank you. We echo those comments and welcome the new council, the returning council in it. And congratulations to the chair. I think you've set a good mark to stick to for the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Perhaps you can make a motion on that. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Councilor Leonard. I apologize. I'm probably not going to help with the uh, fastest uh, council meeting on record. I do have some statements I want to make tonight. Um, I want to start by welcoming the two new councilors to this table. As I'm sure you've already come to realize, the tasks we face as a city are complicated and stressful and almost always come with very little thanks or recognition for any positive changes that are made. However, I have always been taught since I was a little kid that leadership is a burden, not a privilege. So I'm always going to welcome people who enter the arena of public service to strive to make the lives of citizens easier. With that said, I must address some deeply uncomfortable uh, things to me and to many other citizens of Bangor. And I promise after tonight, I will not speak pub publicly about this again, as I firmly believe Bangor can only achieve the goals of housing expansion and mitigating homelessness and substance abuse with care, positivity, subject expertise, and a strategy that is developed alongside, alongside subject matter experts. This off year election was fraught with negative advertising against myself, other council candidates, and the city itself. I know that our two new councillors have spoken out against this pact that promoted negativity, false information, and the promotion of uh, themselves and one other uh, candidate, to, to, to which I, uh, I, I just want to acknowledge that both Councillor Fish and Councillor Dean have expressed that they had nothing to do with these negative ads and have spoken out against them. While I appreciate those statements, those ads never stopped. And while I personally choose to forgive everyone who was involved in this advertising campaign, including our two new counselors, I think it is important to recognize how harmful and damaging this campaign was to our citizens and our city as a whole. 
These advertisements painted people who are suffering from poverty, homelessness, and substance abuse as dangerous, violent, and ruining, quote, our way of life. I want to be crystal clear on this point. Fear mongering about dangers among people who suffer from any of these societal and economic ailments is incredibly cheap and insulting. There is already existing stigmatism about these individuals and spreading information that they are unsafe for the greater population is at best ignorant. It is hard for me to fathom that the area of poverty and homelessness and substance abuse is a paramount issue to people who fail to reach out to leaders in the community who have worked years on this subject matter. Practically all people in this field have recognized that sweeping and bus tickets do not solve the homeless crisis we face here or in any part of this country. And that reality could have been reached if a simple phone call was placed. Um, not only were these subject matter experts ignored, they were insulted at the fact that all these years of hard work to undo harmful stigma has been undone with just one campaign pack. And that is arguably the worst thing to come out of this whole scenario. The campaign of this pack that produced fear mongering, it can be argued as that was an anti-Bangor ad campaign. I want to ensure everyone that Bangor is a safe city. It is a vibrant city with many business opportunities, and it is a great place to raise a family, especially when considering our school system. However, these negative ads spouting Bangor as an unsafe city have greatly damaged the image of safety in Bangor itself. These ads have put into jeopardy our economic opportunities and the inclusion of new members to this city and have painted Bangor as instead of a compassionate city, as a heartless one, which it is not. But while the rhetoric that was caused by this campaign was vehemently negative, I want to stress that many of the claims this campaign promoted were completely false. One claim stated that property crime increased by 30% from 2019 to 2022. I found that pretty alarming and concerning. So when I visited, the Bangor Police Department's information on reported crime, I was frustrated to see that there was not a 30% increase. In fact, there was no increase whatsoever. In actuality, property crime has gone down since 2019. And while that is damning enough evidence for anyone to see, it does not stop there. The campaign also directly targeted me. This campaign, the same campaign that promoted counselors Dean and Fish, state that I, Joseph Leonard, was, quote, bad for Bangor. This one particular ad went on to illustrate that I wanted more crime and more homelessness. Before I go further on that point, I want to tell a story. On this past Veterans Day, which is always really hard for me, I came across a homeless veteran. We talked, we laughed, and he eventually came with me to help clean up Hannibal Hamlin Park while the parade was happening, the, the Veterans Day Parade, with many other really great, wonderful citizens in Bangor. And Ruben, which was his name, he, he's an absolutely outstanding citizen. And I, you know, Ruben, if you're watching, I just want to commend you um, for helping out citizens in Bangor after there was a really negative ad campaign that villainized you. And I want to apologize to you on their behalf. I want to be very clear. I am the only counselor who has spent multiple nights in a warming shelter. I talk with homeless citizens every day. I talk with our community and business leaders constantly about this subject and how we can reduce recidivism and increase our rehabilitation efforts. And despite all this, I am the one who is somehow bad for Bangor. I wanna clearly state that I forgive the two of you for your part in this negative ad campaign that commenced in this city. And I want to stress that I will work with the two of you for the benefit of Bangor. I'm not going to put my own personal feelings in the way of achieving the results Bangor needs and deserves. With that said though, the responsibility of building trust 
on this council is on you. And I'm not going to lie, you have some work to do in the coming years. And before I end this, I want to part with some actual statistics embedded in reality that were not numbers pulled out of thin air. Bangor's average rent in 2018 was $809. In 2022, the average rent in Bangor was $1,387. That is a clear 71% increase in rent prices. If people care about homelessness and want to help, part of the solution is understanding that these current rent prices are killing people. Thank you. Councillor Fournier. Uh, I would just want to echo uh, Councillor Yakubaga and Councillor Trimble's comments regarding the two new or three new uh, council members and the new chair. So thank you. Uh, I have three words caring, kindness, and civility. Good night. Thank you. Councillor Schaefer. Thank you. Uh, congratulations to Councillor Dean, Councillor Fish, Councillor Leonard, and Council Chair Pelletier. Um, to the new folks, I'm happy to answer any questions. My my job is basically as a teacher, so I'm always happy to explain things. And it can be a bit of a learning curve when you first come on council. Um, the one thing that I have found so I'm in my entering my sixth year is that I have been really fortunate that in every year that I've served council, First year I was a new person and there's been new people ever since. And so far there has never been anyone on here that didn't wasn't here for Bangor. Um, there are people that are here for themselves. And I firmly believe that with the new counselors as well. I firmly believe that you're here for your love of Bangor. We all love Bangor for our own reasons. And, uh, and understanding that this is a council of um, of collaboration and not combat is is an important piece. And there will be discussions and there will be back and forth and there will be you know disagreements and there are gonna be things that I support that others don't and things that others support that I don't. And that's just what it means to serve. Um, but if you are doing the job, if everybody is happy with you 100% of the time as a city councilor, you are not doing the job you are elected to do because you absolutely cannot make everyone happy 100% of the time. So be prepared to make people not happy 100% of the time, um, including people that you are, that you are your friends and family can sometimes be like, really, Gretchen? Yep, <laughs> sorry, this is what's best for Bangor, not what's best for me and what's best for you in particular. Uh, so I think when you enter your term of city council service with the goal of doing what's best for Bangor, and centering Bangor in the conversations, I think we will go far. Thank you. Councillor Dean. Well, thank you, Gretchen. That was very kind. And thank you to everyone who supported me and elected me. I believe that my good name and my integrity allowed me to be elected to this position. And I feel that over the next three years, that's what you'll see from me. So thank you very much. Congratulations, Kara. And I look forward to working with every one of the members. Congratulations, Carolyn and Joe. I'm very excited for the next three years. Thank you. And I'll just echo, um, excited for the new faces. Thank you both for spending time with me over the weekend to share a little bit more about your story and your passion and what you're most excited to work on in the upcoming year. Councilor Leonard, welcome back. Um, we're very glad to have you back and um, excited for the energy that you bring as well. Before we go tonight, I do have one order of business, which is <laughs> to make sure that our outgoing chair does not leave with oh, <laughs> This one's not yet broken, although I hear your reputation for breaking them. So please treat it with care as this one has your name. <laughs> Hang on, she's looking for a picture. Oh, hang on, she's looking for a picture. Hold on. Thank you. Thank you. That's what she was looking for. Yeah. Right. I'll take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Being no doubt, we are adjourned. Thank you.